Okay, so we are back on the workshop. So we're gonna start a uh, afternoon session of the uh, workshop, and then so now we uh, um, have just some extra kind of technical stuff to talk about before going free into individual uh, final design project. Then let me. Start sharing my screen. So, okay. I was explaining the agent algorithm, the hierarchical um, agent algorithm, the clock stack algorithm, algorithm. and uh, but in addition, I want to just uh, explain the um, camera control when you or in case you capture your agent as animation and so, so several things it's like so for example uh, let me actually first let me get some example code um, I want to use some MB first I use two D thing. Something like this. So let me replace the rule method with that example. So if I want to capture animation with that, um first let me run this code. Then this is supposed to generate that um, rectangular 45 degree turn pattern. Um, then, okay. It should be starting. It, it came so okay for plus i forgot to turn off the surface option but it's actually fine so anyway so the so now surface is uh created but uh maybe for animation i want i might want to keep track of growth so right now i'm uh typing uh key f to focus to the whatever geometry existing so, but if you want to uh, capture animation, you might not be able to do that. And then if you, for first, I think that was not, uh, animation window was not showing the top view only, it was showing the four views, I think. So maybe first, I mean, if you know your agent is well, uh, running on XY plane, or well, if you know you want to capture animation in uh, top view, you can specify that by uh, putting the ig dot top method. So this just choose one top view to show. And also, uh, if you are uh, capturing animation, you might you might want to change the um, screen size. Um, Maybe 10, 1090 would be good size, although I'm running on the 1090, uh, 1080 display. So it's a bit, I mean, uh, off, so I don't do that. I, instead, I'm gonna just change it to 120, uh, 1080 by 720, that's just a uh, uh, regular HD, but 720p size. So the size change and the top view is set, but main thing is that zooming out. So it doesn't, if you just run this, it just stay the same zoom and then, but agent run out of the window, but you want to capture that uh, agent outside. So you need to kind of automatically focus or 
zoom, automatically zoom out to contain whole thing. And so there's two different ways to do. One is controlling zooming, another is controlling focus. And I'm gonna show you a way to keep focus. And so this is a case it go, the agent goes out of the window. So now I, I don't see the growth. I mean, some of the growth happening, but so I kind of like this one. But anyway, um, so to do that, so basically the way you think, or way of thinking is that you, it's not that different from you focus every single time frame. Uh, not by uh, typing F key, which is also a possible thing to do, um, but by creating agent. So now, so we have this uh, clock stack agent, but then we saw multi, uh, we saw line agent or my agent or something yesterday. And then agents are not only for making geometry in this library agent, it's some, just something to do in, every time frame. Well, uh, you, you can control that time as well. But so you can control camera every time frame or you can control focus every time frame. So I'm gonna show you that focus agent. So that, uh, I mean, to make a class, new class, uh, you start with the keyword class. Uh, by the way, I wanna send you the code later over email. So uh, yeah, you can expect that. Um, I make the focus agent. Focus agent. Um, then all agent needs to Okay, first of all, I already have that here, so I kind of can copy and paste, but um, by the way, let me just show the uh, beginning part of our process. So any agent needs to be part, kind of based on IGO libraries agent. So this is, uh, so I'm showing a little, a little bit kind of a more detail in the uh, coding uh, logic, which I skipped yesterday or two days ago. So by anyway, agent class is always based on, uh, based on uh, existing IGO library agent. I mean, you can see the same thing in, yeah, but yeah, uh, clock stack agent is also based on I agent, so you kind of need to have something like this. So extends I agent. So I agent is a kind of base agent inside inside the library, which has no uh, data inside. They don't know where that exists, or they only know that time. Um, when it starts and when it ends. So the focus agent is, I mean, first uh, to form certain class, you usually need a, a constructor, which is start with the same name, with the agent name. And then in this case, I don't need any input. Actually, if I don't need any input, if I don't need to do anything, actually, I didn't need this one, but but anyway, so I have the constructor and I have a uh, update method here. So in this update method, you want to focus camera to cover whole geometry. And then you can do that by just simply id.focus with no input. Basically, that's it. It's that simple. Is that really that simple? Um, let me confirm that. Wait, focus agent. Okay, it's super simple. Yeah, I didn't need a constructor. Um, anyway, so I said that's all. That's all. Uh, but you have. So this is a template. As uh, I was explaining at some point. Um, well, in the beginning of agent. 
uh, class, uh, I mean, agent um, tutorial. So this is template means when you write template, that doesn't really exist inside the simulation states or world. So you have to make instance of template to use that, which is something like this. So when you use this new something of agent, it generate the agent as an instance and it kind of starts to behave in a specific behavior use uh, right in update code. So I have to do this. I have to do a new focus agent. And then I don't have any input, so just put key parenthesis. And the, basically this is it, I guess, to keep focus. Um, let me test. Taking time. Um, so one thing is that when you automatically uh, keep focus every single time frame, you cannot control the view. You cannot really move the panning of those. Well, you can, but it just forcefully go back. So right now I, I'm not uh, controlling the zoom. Uh, it's automatically focusing on geometry. They actually based on, or depending on the movement or how agents grow out or in day, the camera motion is not necessarily smooth. It just really depends on how agents are moving then how they create geometry sometimes moves too far something but but yeah that this area i i i, I let go those part so uh this is i mean this is a typical way when i capture animation especially that is a kind of spreading out in xy plane so that's this is one thing then uh, I can then now I can show another example. But actually, actually, I want to demonstrate actually capturing animation. So I uh, didn't do the part meaning I didn't have the draw method as I explained yesterday. When you capture animation, you need a uh, kind of need a draw method, draw method, and then you use save frame method. And then inside that is a kind of file path where you save. So I wanna save it as, yeah, first of all, I should change the file name. Clockwork agent three is animation test. Um, so I gonna, Save. And I see something on the chat. Um, okay, focusing. Oh yeah, you don't you don't need a focus agent of empty parentheses. Um, wait, let me move this. Uh, yeah, this is, you don't need, I mean, existence of this doesn't harm, but yeah, you don't need. And then, not sure what you mean with the focusing still works even after removing, removing. If you remove focus agent, you, you, it stops, but, um, but removing, removing agent is kind of tricky because uh, most of the time you have to remove that inside agent. Okay, yeah, you can remove. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, so yeah, I want to save frame. Yeah, so I'm gonna save inside the capture folder and then frame. I mean, this part is just my convention. Um, of, so, whatever folder name and whatever file name or kind of a prefix of file name. 
I might be having some Python yesterday, I'm not sure. But then J saved. Um, I so I think I mentioned that you can either choose a JPEG or PNG, and then I sometimes have a problem with PNG uh, when I was I when I draw some uh, transparent surfaces inside agent, and uh, the somehow that transparency becomes a transparency in PNG and that mess up the color. But anyway, so what do we do here? So if I run this, uh, this just saves frames uh, many times, but the focus is keep going. So it should, yeah, it should, I should see the whole thing growing uh, in the animation. Then let me open it says that uh, camera example agent. Code. The code I have now is inside here. Today is eight. Clockwork uh, agent three. The one it's starting right now, so it should be coming to. Um, so yeah, it's starting. And then yeah, it, the folder is created here. One thing is that uh, I have to do this. Uh, I, one thing is that. Um, when cap you capture frame, animation, your processing animation becomes slower because the saving image every time frame is heavy. So um, maybe what it looks choppy, but, uh, but I mean, if you compile them together, you it, it's fast, you just you co compile the multiple images into one animation, so it's not that. Uh, I mean, then you can control the speed if you are using some uh, animation edit software. So uh, that part is fine. But when anyway, if at least you, you see now um, images generated, actually in the beginning, even like single square is actually zoomed in, it might make it make the view a bit um, moving too fast, but. But yeah, uh, but that's, I mean, that's just one frame. So this is kind of quick way to do, quick way to zoom out uh, based on the growth of agent. Then, so so right now, okay, I'm gonna show also you how to automatically chop if you don't want to wait in front of processing screen. So, so right now I just said save frame every every single time. Then, but if you actually don't really know when to stop and just see what happened and then decide when to stop when you see it. And in that case, you can just wait. And then when you see something seems to be all right, that's enough. And then you can just stop it. Um, by the way, stopping, stop processing window I mean you you can of course use this uh, right uh, top right corner uh, X button also there's a shortcut to stop the processing window or, or con there's a processing shortcut and also IGO shortcut and IGO shortcut control Q and then I thought processing had control W as well. But anyway, so then for example, I, I want to type control W, I uh, know control Q, actually, let me type control W. Uh, no, let me type control Q, and the control Q stops the one, close the window, also stops the agent. Then now I get uh, many frames here. So I run to 70 frames. So yeah, if it's like a 30 uh, frame per second, it's like nine seconds. So then, so this is the case you just run it and then stop when it uh, seems 
uh, good times to talk. But if you want to kind of run, start running because it's slow and then takes time. If you want to start capturing and if you want to leave and if you want automatically stop, then if you know when to stop, like how many times when. And you can, what you can do is you can limit that by um, this. Um, sorry, I'm um, uh, You can limit the count. You can have some counting variables and then check when it should stop. So, but the counting variable needs to be outside of the row. Usually you put, well, I usually put this right outside of the row. And then something count, count, yeah, count it. Then first I initialize with zero. And then if count is smaller than thousand. When I know I want to capture thousand time frame, and I do this, but if I capture that, I need to increment this variable. If not, this stays zero and it's always uh, zero is smaller than thousand. And it's incrementing then, so so every time it captures a uh, image frame, this variable goes up and it until up to thousand. But when it hits, thousand um, if you if you don't mind processing keep running or if you don't mind actually first of all if you don't mind processing keep running you wouldn't mind not to stop it like you just leave it and come back if you have ten thousand of image frame that's fine you just remove some of that or most of that stuff that's all right but if you want to stop capturing and also stop heavy agent simulation, which might really uh, suffocate your computer. So you could stop uh, processing or pro the uh, processing simulation as well. Although um, usually some, pe some people, some programmers don't like to do this uh, because it's not clean way to Finish software, but there is one um, Java level method to stop program, which is called system dot exit, and then um, I kind of forgot the must if I'm supposed to put zero or one, which actually doesn't really matter. It's just a technical thing. What is this thing? I'm putting one here. Not sure why. Um, but anyway, I bet, but this number doesn't really matter. Um, so, so this this means it captures thousand time. Oh, where it, it the save the frame thousand times, and when it hit thousand, it exit or it stops the animation or simulation or it, it or actually automatically close the. Uh, window as well. So, okay, then running thousand will be too long. So maybe let me test how it looks with like the 50 frame capture. So it's running now. And then we actually another thing is when you run this, uh, when you use this method so the processing gonna complain that as an error because it, you are kind of not supposed to do this. Then it's coming, so it takes 50 time frame to finish capturing. Yeah, that's the time. So it automatically closed. And then I didn't complain anything here. 
Ich bin so. So, but anyway, so that's how uh, that's the case. You want to automatically finish uh, capturing animation. Then one more thing. Uh, by the way, when you are like uh, testing something and they keep capturing some stuff, you kind of want to capture in a different place. Different folder meaning you might want to change the folder name because you might, if not, you would mix with the previous one, previous cut capture, and uh, that kind of mess up the animation. So you might want to change this name. Then one more thing. So this kind of automatic uh, termination works only when you know when you want to stop. Uh, but issue is how can you know, can you be sure that is the number you want? If you already run once and kind of saw how many times you run, then that, that kind of, you can be sure. But you, usually you don't know how many time frame you are in. Then, so, but there's a, a method, the option, you can show the current time frame in this, uh, processing console. So let me show you that. That is called IG dot show time. Yeah, so yeah. So that's uh, if you run that uh, first, let me, because I, would, I just want to see how many times it goes. So I want to, I don't capture the image right now, then I don't want to terminate the execution right now. So let me run this. So this one is simply show you the current frame number here. And then, which is usually, I mean, if it's not too heavy, it's like 20 or 15 time frame per second. Okay, it's a thing. So you see that this text here is showing the current time. So it's already 120 and 130 and 140. With this, when you are testing, you kind you kind of see where will be the end of animation you want to record. So if you think this is a good. Uh, moment to end, and then you you see that uh, kind of two hundred sorry something. If you capture too long, and then you always can edit out in editor or just simply removing some of the later images. So uh, one more thing would be you could you could still hit enter to pause the simulation, and it shows it this I mean time is also shows the pause, so that way you, you know uh, how many time frame you run, so how many frame you need to record, etc. So that's a way you kind of coordinate. And but anyway, so this was the focus, and then this was the capturing part, and then this was count, and then I might do the So let me save this file. So that's one way or one kind of um, trick to make the capturing process easier. And another thing would be, another thing would be, if your agents are going 3D, and yeah, in that case you don't, if you don't want to show the animation on top view, and well, I kind of don't know what happens when you have full view and keep focusing. I forgot if it focuses on all of views. Uh, let me check. But anyway, ne next I'm gonna show you that like, how to capture, how to control perspective view, perspective view. Uh, for animation capturing. Then, but before that, let me see what this does. 
Okay, so it's also uh, focusing on elevation and the perspective. So that's it. Then, so now I want to uh, think about the perspective view. Mm, so I mentioned what well, I've shown yesterday that you can put wait, did I say that? Um, so perspective, if you want to choose perspective view, you can type just ID path in the beginning. I mean, inside setup somewhere. Uh, it doesn't matter if you put this here or at, at the end of set up like this, it doesn't matter. But, okay, so then you also have option of axon. I mean, just a more parallel, parallel line. I know perspective, um, perspective uh drawing if this is axonometric drawing just uh, i mean 3d looking at uh, in a diagonal direction but just so you, you can choose axon or policy i mean based on your preference and but one more thing actually major thing is that you want to see in 3d but in what angle for what direction so there's the default direction. And if this is fine, you can just keep having that. But I mean, this is 40, kind of 45 degree turn axon. So the 45 degree turn line seems to be horizontal. So this is a bit confusing view. So, uh, so if you don't want that view, that's a uh, kind of problem. So assuming you are still um, focusing, you just need to pick one direction, one camera direction. So by the way, so when I talk about the controlling camera, uh, I just doesn't really have a camera edge, no, camera edge here, here, but uh, camera object, I mean, it kind of does, but basically it's about the controlling view most of the time like control view, angle, location, uh, tilt, and, tilt angle, et cetera. So then, so this is the case when you want to um, change the view angle of axon or pass. Actually, I'm gonna stay perspective. Most of the operation is kind of same with um, axon actually. Then, so perspective, well, IG dot pass has several different input, and then so this is the kind of part you would check the document of the library, which is inside this section. Then I go to IG. By the way, copy of this whole uh, internet document, documentation work library is also contained inside the uh, installed folder of IDEO that's uh, required by processing. So yeah, you, you can check it out too. But anyway, so here there's many pass methods, but one of or some of them can adjust the view direction. So you see, you can say, you, if you see, you can specify X, Y, Z, but that is camera position, not the angle. I don't, currently I don't care camera position and you can also the perspective angle, which is like a view angle, like a, like a wide range or a narrow range, et cetera. So, but usually I don't change this part. Uh, the main part is like, here you can specify a uh, position and direction so position when you automatically focus with focus agent view position doesn't matter because it, it's 
it's changing the view position to focus for or put all the geometry inside camera. So when you use, okay, so the way I want to use it, I'm going to put two vector here. Um, I'm specifying a zero, zero, zero for the camera or view position, and viewing position. And then I want to see or look into the direction of maybe negative one or, or maybe just one or something. Okay, it's a, I start with a simple one, the negative one, zero, and negative one, one, and zero. And then, but so that's a kind of a camera direction. And then this is position, but position is automatically changed when you focus into geometry, maintaining the camera direction and also uh, perspective view angle. Also, which I didn't change. So let me see if this shows some specific angle. Also, also minus one comma one. Zero is kind of same with default view, I think. So you might not see the difference. Maybe I should change that number. So plus I'm looking, okay. This does not change, or well, this automatically changes. Um, in this view portion, but doesn't really change the Z level in this case. And another thing is because this, this perspective view is having no Z direction or sonic Z component, meaning that's kind of elevational. Although it's perspective. So I want also want to look down I it to be minus one, although that's kind of um, same is default. So I gonna I gonna see zero direction in X direction, only see in the Y positive direction. So you are basically looking to positive Y straight in an elevation way, but the direction slightly down, so it kind of 45 degree was down, so it's looking down, but kind of from y to, to y direction. And then let's see how you're gonna look. Plus I forgot to, I was going to change the example geometry with more three dimensional one. Okay, let me saw actually I'm already here. I want to move back to tutorial page. So, so it's kind of a yeah, Y direction uh, view, but looking down to towards like a 45, almost 45 degree uh, camera down angle. And if you want to see from the side more, you would put shallower angle in Z, which is not minus one, but like minus 0.25 or something. So, but anyway, in this way, you can uh, find your preferred angle for your simulation. And then most of the time you would care like at the last shot or whatever kind of main growth already grown um, state. So you, when you have one kind of uh, composition your agent achieve and you want to have a nice view for that in that case you kind of test for that angle so um, when you saw this is kind of shallow angle more from the ground or I mean this is uh, minus two minus point two five by one by anyway. so that's how so this so by, Perspective position, this part doesn't matter. The first part, first part doesn't matter if you are using focus agent, but second part matters um, to see in which direction. Then actually, so let's just to clarify, 
this example, let me use more three-dimensional agent algorithm. Uh, which one would be good? That's very heavy, but um, for example, for example, okay, I'm gonna use that one. Um, it's very heavy. So for example, if you have this code, I think I should save this one as well. So, okay, let me replace the behavior rule. Wait, do I need the rules? Mm. No. So, wait, is that just three line? Actually, so let me stop this one and let me start. So, right now, I set the view angle uh, or towards the y positive one, z negative minus. 0.25 then then I want to focus on 3D thing so even for 2D and 3D that the focus doesn't really kind of change the behavior they just simply zoom out to focus on that but anyway so you see the camera is kind of automatically moving and it's kind of responding responding to the um, Extent of geometry. Uh, created geometry is weird. Anyway, so so that's a camera setting technique. So you set camera in case of in case it's 3D, you set a camera direction only to set up the best view of yours for animation. So that's that. Uh, one more thing I can explain is that about the camera is that you could also dynamically change the camera state of control. Then I guess you don't, uh, most of you wouldn't uh, need to do that, but sometime if it's very, if it's very like kind of a figure in the center, like, like the Greek column example I made, it was kind of cylindrical, cylindrical thing at the center. I mean, it's growing, but it flew towards the world, but it's kind of central uh, geometry. So when I, I animate uh, capturing, I might want to rotate the camera around that. So why it's growing? So that's the next example I want to show. I mean, most of you are, might not need that, but some of you might or might not, I don't know. Or you might just want to have several different view animation and one of them is a rotating camera and then yeah you can do it. So for that um, kind of it's uh, it's quickest version. I just copy and paste. Uh, I already wrote the camera rotating agent. So let me copy and paste. I wanna put next to the focus agent which it doesn't need to be but uh, so Camera agent is basically, again, just controlling the perspective view angle, that's all. Then, but it's keep, it keeps changing the position and the direction slightly based on the center you define. And then actually, defining center is uh, another thing. You don't, if, I just, if you are just simulating, you don't really know where the center of that, and this is not using the automatic kind of center calculation. It just, you need to set where uh, the center is. So, so let me do that by, I think I'm gonna keep, I'm not sure if I should keep focus or not, maybe. First, let me, okay, let me, delete or hide focus agent and then use camera agent and then maybe later I can remove 
I can introduce that focus agent again. So camera agent needs a center for rotation and they need the initial direction to, for camera to look at the third speed. So maybe, I mean, when I use, well, I use a, when I was using focus, I didn't need to think about the center because it, the whole thing is keep, keep changing. But now I hit them, or I hit it, so I need to put certain center, which I assume zero, zero, zero is kind of center. And they rotate the direction uh, plus this also, I think this also contains the information of, I want to scroll this down. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah that, uh, direction governs direction perspective, although that direction not change out. Oh, direction is actually rotated. So, uh, so I gave that there is a the center point, and that's why I need to give an uh, initial rotating vector. Well, wow, that's a camera angle. Camera angle uh, needs to be set here for the very beginning. So, actually, I'm gonna use 0, 1, minus 0. 0.24 in the same way with the top. So I put two vectors and they said uh, center direction and speed. Speed is, uh, I forgot the unit of speed here, but because I see speed, rotation speed is used to rotate the axis, but before that, um, Let me see what number I put in the other example. So point zero one. So I have two vector and then speed of rotation. I disable the focus agent and then but let me run to see what it does. which I'm not 100% confident it comes out no problem, but uh, let me see and let me wait until this processing simulation starts. I'm not saving the file right now, it's uh, not to be heavy. And okay, okay. So okay, first of all, I should hard uh, focus. Right now it's uh, rotating, but I mean, I just assume that, um, let me bring, let me bring focus. If you know your kind of world or your geometry comes in a very specific XY coordinate or XYZ coordinate, then you can use a specific wizard focus agent. But if you are not sure, maybe it's best to use focus. Okay. Something else is happening. Uh, not sure the part is my center that off. Okay, let me check behavior of camera agent and then so camera agent is uh, I mean having update method and then this goes uh, to prospect every single time and then. Uh, I had for actually one, one thing I wanna change is I'm um, just just 
because I saw some unexpected error or some sort. So I gonna um, I mean that that look like just an issue of kind of uh, order of execution or this camera camera position is not ignored. It wasn't the focus wasn't overwriting that so just to see what happens i wanna for change focus yeah right after i change right after i change the perspective um position and direction by the way i i think i wanna finish like us uh, explaining some additional technique for the production of the project uh, meaning i kind of finish that whole tutorial session then after that I, either i can uh, finish for today okay um let me talk about this first uh you see camera is rotating so but anyway so that's a that's a point if you want to have this kind of uh, camera movement uh, or choreography or a uh, uh, videography thing you can do. I mean, just this is just a rotation. Of course, if you know how to uh, move camera angle in a real time uh, frame, you can do more complex movement. But but anyway, this is just a simple example of rotating. And then then because this is focusing, actually, so yeah, one of the problem it wasn't showing the correct was I was setting the center by myself. And actually, I don't think that was the actual center of geometry. So because I messed that up, but it didn't show much. And then I, instead, I now use focus while it's rotating. So, so it's not really uh, rotating around some center. It just rotates camera and the focus into the geometry in that uh, direction. So, so anyway. Oh, so that was camera. Then, uh, then actually, yeah, as I was talking, I gonna finish the tutorial part. I mean, of the whole workshop. And but, but uh, so either we can finish here and you can uh focus on your project, or you can ask me question. Or okay, two options. You can ask me question about the. Uh, I mean, about this, about the workshop topic, and is about the stuff you're gonna do. I mean, not 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 only specific to you, maybe. And then, I mean, you can send me email about that. Well, actually, you can also ask me that, but now, but uh, or more kind of general thing uh, or technical thing related to this agent. And then, so that's uh, one thing you can do. Uh, and then I got one question, so I'm gonna uh, answer that. Uh, Another thing you can ask me is that if you want to see some other part of this um, IGO library or whatever competition competition technique, not in the agent, not not the area I covered. If you want to see some other thing you saw in the tutorial, you kind of want to know that I, I because I have time, uh, I can do that too. But I can answer that. But anyway, so let me see uh, uh, the question I got on the chat. Uh, so. You want to see how to export objects too, right now. Uh, you tried and you didn't see any. Uh, okay, so it's by shortcut. I mean, in case of agent. Um, in case of uh, panelization of other top down logic, it's different. But when you are dealing with agent and agent generates geometry, you need to wait until agent. Um, create geometry. So first I run this uh, estimation and then I'm gonna type control S. Um, uh, it's a pretty, but you can just simply type control S and then save that while it's running or if you feel like you want to be safe stopping whole thing once and then save, you can hit enter once then stop and then you hit control S. Then, then uh, this is a, a little bit of bug, but the window, like a saving window comes behind. So search it and find it and then type 
I mean, whatever file name. Uh, you have also option of saving as a OBJ for 3D geometry. Uh, Illustrator file that, I mean, you can do that, but that's, yeah, it's 2D in this view. So, but anyway, I want to save as one file. Then, then it's supposed to say something like, uh, it's supposed to say how many objects you found inside the simulation space or I just space and in, in this case, I have uh, 1,318 geometry there. So it was saved that. So if you already see zero here, that that's something wrong. Although, although usually, I mean, if you see something in space, yeah, it cannot be zero. If you see nothing, that's another thing. But let me open Rhino 5. I haven't started right now. So, but let me close this. Let me also close. If you know, let me save this file. I don't want to run the antivirus thing around. Hey, what is happening? Oh, that's because I clicked. So, so, where is right now? Okay, it hasn't come yet. It is coming. Oh, by the way, um, while I'm waiting for Rhino to come up, uh, after you get the uh, captured images, so you want to, you want to uh, compile that into animation. And then I usually do that in After Effects, but if you don't have it, you would want to find some other software which I don't have spe specific uh, experience, but I was just Googling what would be the best, soft what kind of good best uh, free software to do that. Um, but yeah, you can Google search and then find like a free um, frame compiling animation software or like image sequence animation software or something. So I saw easy video recommended there, but I haven't tested, so I don't know if that's good or not. Um, I used to also use uh, QuickTime Pro in the past, but not free. So let me open the file of what I saved. So this, I think this one is the um, agent I saved. So yeah, this one. So in my, at least in my case, it saves, and then this is surface one. I don't know why this car is different, but anyway, oh, this is pure black. So, anyway, in this case, it was successful. Um, then, but somebody asked on the chat that sometime it crashes. Um, that's not, I mean, I, I experienced crashing uh, several times, but that was the time I ran agent for very long time. Then, so then I had like a million geometry and then basically just out of memory error. So if that happens, I do this uh, uh, setting as I explained uh, last time. So I increase memory limit here. Um, so I don't know how, I mean, I'm running on a four gig memory right now. I mean, for processing to use, but I think I can go higher. And then that might solve the problem if it crashes. I mean, 
default might be lower than this, and that might not be enough to save like thousand or ten thousand agents. I mean, right now I just save thousand surfaces, but so that might be one issue. Actually, the only crashing I experienced was all memory uh, limit related issue. So if that is uh, increased memory should work, but if you are actually getting like a million agent and creating a yeah, million of million surface, that might be already limit of whole. I mean, even the maximum memory, I mean, maximum memory is limited by your actual computer chip memory. And then um, I think that's the only limit, but at some point, yeah, it, it exceeds. So if that happens, if you go that level, usually it takes time to go that level. I mean, in terms of number of uh, agents, that then you kind of need to tame them like a, in a super tricky world. Actually, I, I explained that, that problem uh, once or twice and then in a super tricky way like uh, for example you can just uh, generate like export first half of that uh, geometry by not first stopping the latter half and the second time I run agent without having any geometry until the last half time that's possible to do you can just make a if condition I did dot time bigger than thousand time frame or something when you create Geometry here, but that that level is really kind of just um, technically managing uh, or fixing that kind of issue. So, but anyway, uh, important thing is that if you meet memory crash while saving, you change this number bigger. That's a kind of primary thing. Then uh, another question came uh, this image. Uh, mm, you have error message of the Rhino says that you cannot avoid unreadable object. One thing, actually, another, uh, not hundred percent sure if this is the probe, this is a cause, but I actually saw that may, uh, several or uh, occasionally, but uh, that is. So uh, in my case, that happened when, when, oh, is that running exploit? No, uh, that happens when I run code and then save then, you, especially when you have a thousand of geometry, it takes time to save. If you close window before saving, it stops saving in the middle, so that cause that issue. So um, meaning, I, I think, uh, for example, I'm going to save this again. So if I say save and then close here right now, I think you're going to, I would say this is another thing. This is just overwriting to the same file. If you want to avoid yes. Uh, actually, but this one says saving complete, so it should be fine. But sometimes if you, you're heavy and if you kind of, especially, no, actually, the, especially when you use this stop, this stop is actually stronger than the uh, closing button on at the top left right corner of window. It kind of forcefully stop and then, but top corner wise a bit um, stronger, well, it could be same, but uh, the uh, control Q to stop. I tend to use control Q because it, control Q would wait until it stop saving, then close the window. But the safest is just you make sure, uh, first let me say, you, the safest is you wait until you see the message, you, the save is saving complete in the console. So if that happens, yeah, it's done there. If not, then if you close, that will create 
a corrupt file, which you right now will complain that. Um, if that is not an issue, I don't know. I, I, I haven't uh, experienced that problem. And then in that case, I can uh, uh, consult your specific problem. In that case, you need to send me like a, a files for me to check. Um, yeah. So, okay. Then uh, somebody, uh, then somebody has no pop up window. Uh, okay. Is that uh, uh, Macintosh or Windows? Uh, for Windows, it pop up behind the animation window. So, I mean, processing window. So, let me see. Okay. So here I hit Control S, and then nothing happened. Plus, it actually also stops the simulation. But I mean, it wasn't happening in the processing one and two. But uh, now it's behind, so I kind of I mean, it's a bit um, tight. Yeah, not not great thing to do. But um, bring it front and do something. And then I also, I, I've heard Macintosh have some issue, but I assume you say some meaning that solved, I guess. But anyway, uh, Mac might have some different issue, which I don't know. It might be same, it might not be same. So that's a uh, possibility. But anyway, uh, okay. So I kind of think um, answer or the question. Okay. Uh, anybody have any other question related to this? Or is there anybody has anything you want to know in terms of like this processing and idea topic? Like if you are interested to know some other part of the tutorial, I mean, no, not a big chunk, but if you have uh, some specific, I can show you quickly, but, or we can just finish today and you can um, go back to work on your project. While you're thinking about that, uh, let me uh, uh, repeat or remind you what we're gonna do tomorrow. So tomorrow we are going to do the, uh, in each individual participant gonna talk, with me face to face over Zoom most of the time. Most, I mean, for if you don't have any problem on the platform. And then, I mean, talk, I, I wanna give you feedback to your project. But but before that, kind of as assignment, you, you have to update your work. And especially, um, first, I wanna send you the time frame, like, and um, I wanna. I'm gonna set up the schedule, like who is, whose meeting time is what time. So you are expected to show up on Zoom at that time. And then if you know you have problem with Zoom, let me know. We will not try to find out or figure out other channel to communicate. Then, then, uh, then also um, you need to send me the file beforehand because in, during that uh, feedback, especially if you have technical issue, or especially if uh, actually, especially if I want to give you very specific feedback about how to change code or like what specific location to code, I want to have the code to show that to you. So please send me the code. Uh, if you have a like, capture image or some supplemental, supplement, uh, like material, you can send me that. To, but on, on over email. So please send me uh, update updated code of yours. I can be just one or it could be several. Uh, before the meeting meeting time of tomorrow, then meeting time gonna be uh, sent out uh, today at night later or early morning or something. So so that's the plan. And the one thing I'm kind of not not sure, well, not, not, not even not sure, is that who 
is still uh, participating in the final project. I was, I, mean, I want everybody to participate, but uh, I, I, I mean, so far, like, uh, several participants kind of disappeared. So uh, in the assignment work, but I also know two at least uh, coming back because they are having technical problem and I mean computer or oh, network problem and they are fixing that and they want to come back. So when I send, I, I want to send that schedule to everybody. And then if you are uh, missing and you are, uh, you intend to join in the kind of final project round uh, with a discrete and having one one. Let me know over email. So anyway, uh, if no, uh, no, nobody has any specific request about any extra tutorial content, and then I, I think I'm gonna finish here, and I'm gonna expect you to work on your final project further. Uh, so far, it's it's promising. Yeah, uh, yeah, I I saw some interesting things, so I want to see more. Of that, and actually, uh, one more thing. Uh, I don't know if, if this um, uh, kind of premise uh, about the workshop. Uh, all workshops supposed to submit the final work to the digital future world. Uh, I mean, main group, and then they are going to have exhibition digitally and physically. Uh, all, the, all the physically part depends on the the corona situation. So, but the, uh, the actual physical semi, uh, actual physical exhibition, if that happened, that happened in China, uh, I don't know where, in some gallery space in the university, I guess. And then, but I think they also have like a website exhibition, I mean, online showcase. So we are going to, have, I mean, your work is gonna be submitted there and then shown or exhibited. So, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, if you produce great work, I mean, people want to see that. So, but anyway, um, uh, that's the thing. Then, 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 okay, then, so I'm gonna, uh, I think so. Here, I, I finish this uh session today, and then, uh, I wanna see you tomorrow individually. Then, they check uh, the email to find out what time you are going to meet, okay. Okay, thank you very much for participation for today and then I'm gonna see you tomorrow. Bye.